Hey, I'm coming to you from deep inside the Amazon jungle. I just got bit by a piranha. It was amazing. Actually not. I'm <laughs> a quarter of a mile from my hotel in a park, but it kind of looks like the Amazon and it sort of gives me the feeling like I'm actually in Brazil instead of in some big city. Anyway, uh, let's talk about information modeling. So in the previous lecture where I introduced you to information, I talked about the idea that information has types and attributes and those, excuse me, information has types, the types have attributes, the attributes have values, and that we group those together into information items, all the values of the attributes of a type. So if you don't remember that, you might want to go back and look at that again because um, I'm going to use that now. So instead of just talking abstractly about what is information and how do we think about it, now we're going to do some practice. And this is a kind of practice that um, hopefully if you catch on to it, you can do it for the rest of your life on all the different information systems that you ever encounter. So this is the idea of modeling the information. And what we're going to do is we're going to take apart information. And I'll give you an example of that in just a moment. But what I want to do first is I want to give you the components of an information model and talk about how we go about doing this. So if you remember, we had information types. And for Facebook, we said that there were people and location and events. Those were some of the information types that, that, um, uh, that Facebook cares about. And now we can start to draw a diagram. So for a particular information type, for example, a person, we can start to surround it with all of the different, uh, with all of the different attributes that a person has. We've, we've talked about this before, the name, the address, hometown, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we can begin to create a more and more sophisticated model that goes deeper and deeper into these ideas. So, so far we've really talked about these things just at the very superficial level. Now as we go deeper into it, we're going to talk about them at a much more um, specific level. So here's a diagram that goes the next level down. So we know that a person has a name, but the name actually consists of a first and a last name. Now, right off the bat, I think you can begin to see that this can get pretty complicated, right? Because does a name really consist of a first and a last name? Well, what about middle names? What about names that um, don't fit that model? Many, many places besides, you know, Europe, or besides Europe have name models that don't fit this at all. And so do we want to account for them, those name models as well? And you can imagine if I'm Facebook, for example, and I have 700 million users all around the world, yeah, I do want to account for that. And so things are going to get pretty complicated. So, uh, also an address. Now notice the address that we have is more like hometown in Facebook. They want to keep it really simple, but we could certainly expand that city, straight, city state, country, uh, postal code, etc. Right? And now that's starting to get really more complicated. And I think when you've filled in forms that have your address on them, you can see that there's usually lots of different fields that you fill in and lots of different choices. And now even within those choices, there's some complexity. Like for example, country. Do I type in the name of the country or do I select it from a list? Do I use the country name in uh, a Western format and, you know, in an English format? Or do I sense where you are in the world and give you a list of country names that are specific to your language? Uh, this can get extremely complex. We're going to try to keep it as simple as possible, but I want to give you a feeling for the sophistication of this and to actually maybe entice a few of you into getting more into this and trying to understand the complexity of this and maybe even starting to do some of this complexity yourself, starting to do design that takes into account all this complexity. Okay, so the ideas I presented so far are that there are information types and those information types have attributes and we can begin to unpack that. And what we're going to do in the example that's coming right up is we're going to unpack that for a very simple site. We'll choose one simple site and I'll go backwards using all the user interface, using all the forms and the displays to try and figure out what the information model might be behind that particular site. And we'll do a simple one. We're not going to do Facebook right off the bat. I may put some of you guys on Facebook later on, but um, we're going to start with something simple where I could actually get through most of it in the, in the time that I have to give you a demo. Now we're going to use Pandora as an example of um, a reasonably simple information model, but even on Pandora, as you dig into it, you realize that this information model gets um, more and more uh, detailed and more and more sophisticated, and there's more and more pieces to it. So let's start here on um, my profile screen, and um, I just want to give you a, a kind of a tour of, of Pandora, if you, in case you haven't used it before, before I go into the detail and actually explain the model. But one thing I want to show, um, which is kind of an example of something we talked about previously, is this image. I don't remember ever giving them this image, and this image seems strangely to me like my Facebook image. And so I'm going to right-click on this image and say um, Properties. And this is going to tell me where that image came from. 
And sure enough, when I look at the address of that image, what do I see? Graph.facebook.com and then a bunch of other junk. In other words, Pandora is getting my image from Facebook. How did they get my image from Facebook? They know my email address. I gave them my email address on Facebook. I gave them my email address on Pandora. Facebook has a, um, has a way for other programs to get the information inside of, um, inside of Facebook, and it's easy enough for them to look up my image on Facebook and bring that in here. I'm not sure I really like that. I mean, I didn't want my image inside of Pandora, but here it is. Oh, well, I'm not that mad about it. All right, so what I really want to talk about, however, is the way that you can look at the screens of Pandora and from that figure out the information that Pandora is storing and how it's storing. We just saw a little bit of, a, of an exception to that. Pandora is actually not storing my image, but it gets to use my image because it grabs it over from Facebook. At any rate, there's another thing in here, this Bob31134, that you also won't see as my supplied information. What do you think that is? What would be the word that we would use to describe that? That's right, it's my user ID. It's not my name, it's my user ID, and obviously the way that they construct user IDs is they take your first name, and then they put an incremented number. Remember we talked about numbers that keep going up, incrementing numbers? Um, uh, and so I obviously am the 31,134th Bob that ever subscribed to Pandora. Okay, anyway, um, we'll, we're going to get into more details about the information model, and, and I'll make it a lot more explicit in just a moment. Right now I'm just giving you a tour. So I can type in the name of an artist here, and since Flogging Molly is our um, example... Um, I'll just do Flogging Molly here, and it plays a Flogging Molly song for me. It should actually take me to that. Oh, there we go. Um, I have a little, this is a tab control. We talked about tab controls before, um, and uh, my profile is one of the tabs, and the Now Playing is also one of the tabs. So here's the Flogging Molly page. Um, so I can, I also have a set of radio stations. I have a Missy Higgins radio station that I can go to. And I have a Jai Utah radio station that I could go to. Um, and all of those are radio stations that I've set up on, on Pandora. Okay, so this is not a class about how to use Pandora, and probably you know a lot more about how to use Pandora than I do. Um, so that's really not what I want to talk about. Instead, what I want to talk about is how we can use screens like this one um, and screens like this one when I click on the artist's name. Um, to figure out exactly what's going on on, on, um, on Pandora. Okay, so let's get over there and talk explicitly about that. All right, so when you first register for Pandora, and this is really a good way of seeing how, um, how a system, you know, what basic information the system is storing about you. It's storing about you information that you type in there, and the first place that you type in information is when you register. So you can see from this screen that I type in an email, a password, a birth year, a zip code, um, a gender, and then whether I want to have them, um, uh, whether I want to have them send me stuff, and then I this click this checkbox here, um, uh, as usual, is just you know have you read our have you read our contract and do you basically agree to our contract? And of course, lots of stuff in that contract that we've talked about before, and we'll talk about again about privacy, about the reuse of your data, and nobody ever reads those contracts, including me. So I have no idea what Pandora is going to do with my data. Yet I use it anyway. Okay, so this is the screen, right? This is the user interface that you type in your registration information. And now let's look at this as an example of something else. So we've seen, these di we've seen this diagram before, the diagram up here. Person is an information type. And from the screen, we can figure out, well, what kind of information do they store about person? They store an email and a password and a birth year and whether or not I want to send mail and my sex, right? I get that directly off of this screen. Now, as we saw before, a person also has a picture, right? And so they're getting my picture from Facebook, but they're not storing that information. A person also has a user ID, and so I probably could have put in here user ID, and that's something that's created by the system. Okay, so this is something we've seen before, and now we're using an example of a real application, Pandora, in order to work through this. Pandora has an information type called a person, and that person has these attributes. Now let's look at it from yet another angle, each attribute and what the allowed value, what the possible values are in there. Email should have this form, aaa at bbb.ccc. If you type in an email address and it doesn't meet that form, Pandora is going to say, that's not really a valid email address, please try again. Password, they probably have all sorts of restrictions for passwords. Let's just say right now that they want their passwords to be more than eight characters. Birth year has to be a four-digit number, 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 number. 
um, send mail is a yes or no, and sex is male or female. So what I've done here is I've gone from the user interface of Pandora to a model of the information type uh, for person that Pandora is likely. Well, let me put it this way. Pandora is definitely doing this, right? Because otherwise, this information that you type over here would go nowhere. Pandora is definitely using this, but they're probably doing a lot of other stuff that we can't see as well. But that's okay. We're, we're, we're doing a simple model right now. So we have the user interface leading us to a model. This is the information model of the person information type with its attributes. And then this is information about the values of those attributes, what's allowed in the values of those attributes. And of course now the person, Bob Boyko, is, a, um, is one item of the person information type on Pandora. Okay, so we can go further and we can start to explore not just the information they keep about me, but the information they keep about music, right, which is kind of what Pandora is all about. So let's start with a song. And once again, I have a screen here, and I'm going to look for all the information that's specific to a song. And so, obviously, the song has a title. And now, even though it's not showing on the screen here, I don't see anywhere here where it says the identifier, the ID of the song. I'm going to assume that it does, because I know that everything has an identifier. Every information item is going to have an identifier, and so I'm just going to put that in there by, um, uh, by intuition. Now, I also see the lyrics on the screen here, so I'm going to put in a little quality for lyrics. And then there's something I also know about Pandora, which I'll share with you, which is kind of cool about Pandora. In fact, it is the cool thing about Pandora, that the way that they're able to slide from song to song to song is that they find other songs with similar qualities. So the rhythm, the tempo, the, ten the kind of voice, is it a female voice or a male voice? Is it sort of sad? Is it upbeat? All of those things are qualities of songs. And they actually have gangs of people that are going through each song and attaching those qualities. They don't find those qualities automatically, or at least they don't find most of them automatically. They have people that go through and tag, add that information to each song, and that's how Pandora is able to go from song to song to song. It might be something that you already know. So here's my model. Here's my information model of a song, mostly derived from what I see on the screen here, title, lyrics, ID, and, and uh, title, title and, and lyrics for sure and some that I happen to know about Pandora that I wanted to add here just to exemplify some things that we've had in the class. So I have the user interface again, I have the information model again, and I have also the attributes. Title is one sentence, right? That's about all I can say about it. The ID, I'm going to assume is a sequential number. I don't know how they do IDs, but let's just make believe they do sequential numbers. Lyrics, on the other hand, is multiple sentences. Title is one sentence, lyric is multiple sentence, and qualities are very interesting. One or more values from a list that Pandora has developed. So somewhere in the back room of Pandora, they're deciding what are all the different qualities that you guys, you taggers, you people who are working for us, can assign to each song. Here's the list. There's 100 of them, or 200 of them, or 1,000 of them, whatever it is. And so they have a controlled list. They control that list of values for the qualities attribute. That's one interesting thing about the qualities attribute. Another interesting thing about the qualities attribute is that there's more than one of them, or they can be more than one of them. Only got ever going to be one ID only going to be one title, only going to be one lyrics, but there could be many, many qualities. Okay, so what this screen shows is a basic model of what a song is. Now notice what I don't have in this model. I don't have the band, Flogging Molly. I don't have the, um, the recording, Swagger. Um, and I also don't have, oh, did I forget? Im no, I'm sorry. I don't have image. This is the image of the band. Excuse me, this is the image of the um, recording. None of that is part of the song. We're going to talk about how that stuff is put together in a little while. But what I want you to see from this example is I'm only focused on the song and things that are specific to the song, not things that are specific to the band the song belongs to or anything like that. Okay, so so far we have, the, we have a person and we have a song. And they're both relatively simple models. And as I said, probably Pandora has a more sophisticated model. But for our purposes right now, this will more than do it. And the reason that I'm showing you this, the reason that it's important is because it's an example of how you can look at Pandora in two ways. You can look at it as somebody who's just consuming music, but you can also look at it as an architect trying to take it apart, trying to figure out what the pieces are, and specifically in this case, the pieces of information. We could take it apart looking for the pieces of the user interface, which we've done before. We've, we've had examples of this. In this case, we're looking for the pieces of information, and we're trying to figure out how is it all organized, how is it all put together on Pandora. Okay, so that's a, that's a, um, a person and a song. Now let's look at a band. So I'm going to the band page. I clicked on Flogging Molly, and it gives me Flogging Molly's band page. And again, the band has a name, clearly. The band has a bio. That's what this is down here. Um, it's the bio. 
the band has a picture, so here's a picture for the band, um, and the band has an ID, and I'm always going to say that everything has an ID, whether I see it or not. I'm going to assume it's true, and believe me, it is true. Everything in here has a, has a unique ID, otherwise you would never be able to find it again. You would never be able to find the Flogging Molly band information if you didn't have an ID on it. So once again, we have user interface that I focus in, and I see what's just specific to the band, not how the band is related to other things, and I pull it out into this nice little diagram, and I see that a band is also a relatively simple thing. A picture, a bio, a name, and an ID. And then again, I can look at the attributes of the band and decide um, what, what has to be true about them. The name is going to be a few words. The ID, again, I'm going to assume is a sequential number. The bio is multiple sentences, and I'm going to assume that the picture is a JPEG. A JPEG is a kind of picture. There are many different ways to store images, and JPEG is a popular one. And I'm just going to make that up and assume that that's true. The point here is to not necessarily to, to nail it, like I would have to go to, to Pandora and start talking to the developers to really nail it, but to show exactly how much you can figure out just by looking at the user interface. So we have people so far and songs and bands. Now notice again what I don't include in here. I don't include, include this discogra discography, which are, you know, are recordings. And, I, and um, because the recording is not specifically the band information, it's re information about the about the recording and, and somehow is related, and we'll talk about how it's related in just a moment. Okay, one last thing I want to talk about here is genre. Genre, if you don't know already, is the kind of music. We have alternative music, blues music, Christian music, classical music, comedy, country, etc., etc., and you see some of the user interface for genre here, and notice how this user interface works. I have um, uh, a big list over here, a major list, alternative blues, etc., when I click on um, alternative, I see subgenres. So inside alternative, indented under alternative, in an outline form, or what we'll come to see as a hierarchy form, we have today's alternative, 90s alternative, 80s alternative, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are subcategories, these subgenres. And if I click on one of these, like today's alternative, I see that I get the page for the genre. This is a page that shows all the subgenres. This is a page that shows information about the genre. So this is the page that I'm going to look at when I, when I actually model the genre, when I say, well, what do they keep about a genre? And I see from this page, and it's, hopefully this is starting to get familiar to you, kind of what information Pandora uses. I'm again going to assume it's an ID. Then the band has a, um, a name and a picture and a description. And I forgot to put a little circle here for description, so I'll fix that at some point. And once again, I can start to make some assumptions about the name. The name of the genre is going to be one or a few words. The ID is going to be a sequ sequential number. The description is going to be multiple sentences. And the picture, once again, here's the genre picture up here, is going to be, uh, um, is going to be a JPEG, a certain kind of image. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've looked at different pieces of the Pandora UI, the Pandora user interface, and from there we've made certain assumptions about the information that, that, um, that uh, Pandora must be saving. Now, I am very confident that Pandora is saving all this information about genre. Otherwise, it couldn't be here on these pages. Do I? Am I sure that it's the only and all the information they're storing about genre? No, because I haven't done an exhaustive analysis. And in the end, I'd really have to go talk to the Pandora people to really get the, the, final, the final line. Okay, we're modeling information here. We're modeling information from a user interface. We're looking at different bits and pieces of the user interface and from them making assumptions about what kind of information Pandora must save. And so what I want to encourage you to do is begin looking at sites this way. Begin looking at sites and decomposing their user interface. Also begin looking at sites and decomposing their information model so that you have intelligent things to say about this site that other people don't even know, don't even notice, and you can start to make a lot of assumptions and a lot of um, analysis, a lot of sort of knowledge that you can generate inside yourself by knowing this information model. Okay. So far, we've looked at all of these um, different information types, genre and person and um, band and song. We've looked at them um, separately as all their own little entities. But as you can clearly see, these things are all mixed together. A genre has bands and bands have recordings. And I didn't bother to do recordings in here. But bands have songs and bands have, um, uh, bands have relationships to other bands, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So now let's look at that. And let's look at the bigger picture. We're going to zoom out, and instead of looking at the structure of each of these information types, we're going to look at the relationships between the information types. Oh, whoops. Sorry. I went the wrong way. There. Now, this diagram 
talks a lot about how the um, how these different information types interact with each other. So, for example, a song has a genre. That's this connection right here. A song has a genre, but we also saw that genres have subgenres. So there's a relationship between a genre and itself. A genre has subgenres. A song has a genre. A song is by a band. A band has similar bands. You see on you can see in some of the user, uh, in some of the screens in Pandora, especially if you bring up Pandora and look around, that when you're on the band page, it says similar bands. Right? How does it know that? Because there's a relationship from one band information item to another band information item. Furthermore, person, you, on Pandora, can like a band, you can like a song, you can like a whole genre. Um, and so all of these things are interrelated, and that's how that information is all composed on the screen. We have all the information about a band, and then when we put that band on the screen, we can choose to put the picture or the description or the title of the band, whatever. Um, we can also choose to put that same band information on the song page. So that way up here, when we're on the song page, this is band, inf excuse me, this is band information, the name of the band. Um, when we're on the band page, we can put recording information. And again, I didn't bother to put the recordings in here because I wanted to keep it simple. But you get the idea. These are all separate information types, all stored separately, all with their own attributes. But when I construct a page, when I bring them all together, I can mix and match. I can mix and match and bring them together because I have these relationships between the different between the different information types. Okay, so let me summarize this. What I tried to do here was give you an example, a simple example of, of decomposing a site, and this is a really simple example. The life gets way more complicated. If you were to try to do Facebook or something like that, you'd see that these diagrams would get out of control and they'd cover whole walls. Um, and we'll see some types when we look at World of Warcraft. We're going to see some types of diagrams that are similar to these that would cover an entire wall or maybe a few walls because it's so complicated the way all the information is put together that it requires a lot of space just to look at it. Okay, so what we did was we looked at a, a, a simple site, Pandora, and we began to look at the user interface. And from the user interface, we began to take it apart. As I said before, you could take apart the user interface and say, how does the user interface work? That's one thing. But what we're focused on today is taking apart the information and looking at different screens to see the different kinds of information that Pandora must be storing and then beginning to look at the relationships between the different kinds of information. So what I showed you here is an information model. The information model shows information types, attributes, and the values of those attributes and how all those information types are interrelated.